Hi all, I'm on an island and that gives me the perfect opportunity to do more sideways fire. In this case I've built a much larger brick rocket stove type thing. This time with the full J-shaped firebox, the wood will go in there, fire will burn down sideways and then all the way back up this chimney pipe. And this is part of a project one of my friends, let's just call him by his code name, the Penguin, wanted to fuse sand into glass. However, I'm not sure I can get a small wood fire hot enough to do that in the space constraints and material constraints I have. However, the island has a plentiful supply of naturally occurring clay, which is what I use to seal these bricks. So, going from that, I decided to try firing a couple little things made out of clay. Gonna make a little cup-like thing for the penguin, and then the wyvern poet is going to get a little chess piece, which she requested. So, I am going to edit together a string of videos taken at various points during the firing, and hopefully have a look at some successful clay pieces tomorrow morning. See you then. Sticks pretty quickly here. All right. Here we're just sort of doing some pretty slow preheating, though you can already see the fire there is going sideways, and the majority of the smoke is coming out the stack. Uh, going to get a quick shot in there. There's the pot and the chest piece. We're just going to let this little fire burn a bit, then we're going to let that burn out. I have, uh, oh, put down that rock, kids. We have, uh, we have my, some of my little helpers here, along with my dad and my lovely mom, and they're here for the fire. So, gonna check back after the preheating is done and we're switching over to the primary burn. All right, continuing with the preheating, Got a larger bed of coals in the very mouth. We are using this little aluminum plate as a lid to slow it down if it starts flaming up too much because we do not want to overheat the pots. That could possibly cause them to explode from thermal shock. And we are joined by the director of the Cuddy Hunk Island Historical Society who is an artist and a potter and has a lot more experience with firing than I do. So it is a great honor to have her helping us out. So we will check back when the next stage of preheating is happening, maybe when we're getting some more flames in there. All right, here we are. We are in the initial parts of the primary burn. If I stop talking for a second, hold it up close, so you can probably hear the rocket noise. Yeah, that's just starting to get really happy. See a little bit of flame coming out the top of the stack, which is good. So let's give this thing some more fuel before it yells at us for being hungry. All right, we're quite a bit further into the burn. There's a little smoke leaking out. However, most of it is blasting right out of the stack. So this is going towards the what the burn is going to be like for most of the time that we're firing. The pot and the chest piece have not made an explosion sound, so I'll assume that they are still largely intact. And let's get back to feeding this before it gets hungry again. Quite a bit further into the fire. It is still being nice and happy. You can certainly see all of that fire, pretty much all of it, is going down and sideways and nice, health, nice healthy flame plume out the stack. So that's happy, we're going to keep feeding it. Alright, again a bit later in the burn, still flames coming out of the stack and if this will resolve, the outside of the stack is over 300 Fahrenheit. The inside 
pretty much goes off the charts. This thing is only accurate up to probably seven or eight hundred. In the firebox there, off the charts. That's as high as it can possibly measure. And we still have, if the light will swing around to there, we still have a little bit of wood, a lot of wood. It's not focusing well. Mm. At this state in the burn, the little kiln is about the fire equivalent of a hungry baby bird that needs almost constant tending. Here I just shoved in a few pieces so I can spare a few seconds to make this video, but just about now I'm going to have to go start collecting the next batch to shove down into the firebox. Down there, that is the glow directly from the coal bed. I think the other side will have a slightly better slot. Yeah, look at how bright those coals are. That is nice. And there is so much lovely heat getting thrown right off of the whole stack. I'm surprised it's not glowing. Probably almost is. It certainly pegs my infrared thermometer. And unfortunately I was unable to get a hold of a thermocouple. But let's just say it is very hot in there. But we're about at the point where I'm going to start slowing down how much wood I'm feeding in and maybe feed in less frequent but slightly larger chunks to keep the coals going. And we'll check back again probably as it's really starting to burn down. Just inserted the final piece of wood which is right there. It's a nice dense piece of wood and we're just going to tap those ends in and then watch how it behaves. Probably we'll be putting that metal cover we were using as a damper earlier. Probably going to put that back over the opening in some way, shape, or form to sort of slow down how much cool air is sucked in and try and soften the otherwise very sharp decrease in temperature as the fire goes out. Not sure how well the camera will resolve that. But, there's the last of the flames as it's finishing up. Oops, somebody's messaging me. Must be popular today. But yeah, there's the last of the ghostly flames. The camera captures them as sort of looking like a sodium yellow, but they're actually a lightish yellow with a blue-purple edge. Much like you would get in an alcohol burner. That's kind of cool, or hot in this case, ha ha ha, slap me later for the pun. But we're just sort of letting that burn down, and hopefully tomorrow we'll have some little clay pieces to pull out of what's left of this thing. Okay, the last stick is all the way in. I knocked the side guide bricks off One's off, one's just sort of out of the way, and I'm going to take the metal cover and sort of slow down the incoming air, try and keep a little bit of heat in, because with the draft on this thing and how little thermal mass it has, it could cool down too fast for the pot, so I am going to choke it off a bit and hopefully the little cup and little chest piece survived somewhat intact. Good morning. It is now about 6.35. We stopped feeding the fire at about 23.30 last night. So then we bricked up, just sort of put bricks across the intake and put a cap on here to stop rain and just let it coast overnight. Meter still in Fahrenheit, I don't have a free hand to change it, but down there it's still a bit warmer than the ambient. Yeah, the ambient's 70-ish, and yeah, so it's, it's a bit warm in there, but mostly cooled off. So, 
I'm gonna pop the cap off and let's take a look inside. You can just make out the wares down there. Gonna go reach in and see if I can just gently wiggle them loose from the grate or the kind of bent, half melty remains of the grate. So here we have the little clay rook for the wyvern poet, painted in sort of a half and half color. The bottom side was sort of where the flames were coming from, so it had more ash deposited on it. And then over here we have the little cup for the penguin. Again, one side has more ash deposits and is lighter because the flames hit the back of the flue channel and splash and swirl. And that side was where the splashing, swirling fire hit first. So, I think I would call this a successful little experiment. I'll probably come back later and do a video on just visually inspecting the rest of the device to see how it survived. But for now, since it's starting to rain, I'm going to pack up my stuff and go back to the house. That's all. Thanks for watching.